Welcome to LOA Today. Walt Thiessen and Shirley, Shelley Epperly <laughs> here today. It is Monday, January the 28th, 2019, and I have a tangled tongue. It's 8 p.m. in New York, 5 p.m. in Los Angeles, 1 a.m. in London, and Sydney, Australia is at 12 noon. Wherever you are in the world, thank you for tuning in for yet another episode of LOA Today, your daily dose of happy. And now that I got my tongue untangled, how you doing, Shelley? <laughs> I'm doing good. I'm doing really good. Yeah, I had a super, super lazy weekend. Um, well, not totally lazy. I went and visited my mom on Saturday, and then Sunday my husband woke up with an abscess tooth, so we just, Ooh. like, did nothing all day. Yeah. He just went to the dentist a little while ago, and he's got to get another root canal. So. Oh, that sucks. Yeah. Well, we'll we'll hold out uh, positive thoughts for him and uh, healing thoughts and help him to Heal up his tooth in his mouth ASAP. Yeah, yeah. I think he's got some really good antibiotics now, so it should. Very good. Every... Yeah, everything else is going really good. Um, my businesses are seem to be falling together. I just have started making it a habit of every morning um, just really making sure that I'm grateful for what I have, but also being grateful for what's to come today, grateful for the opportunities, grateful mm-hmm. for the, you know, the great times I had, you know, just, sure. I just kind of picture what I want to happen that day and things to fall in place. And it's just, it works so good. So those processes that we do at first, especially the ones we do first thing in the morning are so important. I've really become, yeah. I, I've become very appreciative of them and recognize just how important they are, particularly in the last few weeks. Um, if you, if I skip a day or, you know, I, I don't do them till later in the day or whatever, I feel it now. I don't know about you, but it gets to the point now where yeah. if I don't do my, my mirror exercise, my little vision video I've set up and a couple other things that I like to do, I, I it's like the day hasn't gotten off to a good start. So I appreciate the fact that you're doing your gratitude. <laughs> not to be yeah, pedantic, but yeah. it really it it really makes all the difference in the world. And I'm not very good at like um, catching up. Like you know, if I don't do it in the morning, like I'm going to do it later. So mm-hmm. I either do it in the morning or it just doesn't happen. And then if it doesn't happen, I still it usually still doesn't affect me so much as like having a bad day. But it definitely when I do it in the morning, I definitely see the um the fruition of things throughout the day more you know because i'm expecting them absolutely yeah the i can't remember what the term was louis says that uh abraham hicks doesn't call it segment intending anymore what do they call it oh path path paving that's what they call it that's the new terminology Path paving. that's that's nice that's a good term i like that one it's a little bit more direct yeah yeah um but it's also very very important I really came to appreciate this past weekend how important it can be because, I mean, you're probably like me. Most of your days probably go very nicely. You're probably in a good space most of the time. But every once in a while, you wake up, and it, for whatever reason, you're just not feeling it. You're just not in a good space. Um, yeah. That's what happened to me on Sunday in particular. And I woke up, and I did my mirror exercise, and it felt hollow. I didn't even feel it like I normally do. And it was just one thing after another. But the whole day was like this massive struggle. But that's where I really appreciated having the processes to do, even though they weren't yeah. working as well as they normally did. Um, just having a list of them on the wall really, really helped me get through a, a tough day, a very, very tough day. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, I can't say things didn't go wrong. They did, but they went wrong in the right way. Like, for instance, um, when Anne Marie and I did the podcast that evening, um, she couldn't even be there for the beginning of it. And then when she did uh, connect in, she was she and Mike were in a restaurant um, where there was, there was a live band playing. And so we have this live band coming over and I say, well, that's not going to really work too well. So she calls back a little bit later on. <laughs> I'm doing the show solo about halfway through the show, the entire connection drops out and then cat kicks back in. I mean, all kinds of crazy stuff uh... going on, but because we stayed in as positive a place as we could get. And, and that's what it's all about. Just feeling better. Even if you're not feeling good, you go for feeling better. It made the difference. We got through. And, you know, it, mm-hmm. it wasn't the best. It wasn't the most stellar show we'd ever done. 
but we got through it. It was a decent show. And I can't, more importantly, I came through it feeling like the next day was going to be better, which of course was today. Mm-hmm. And it was, today was better. Um, so those processes, they, they're, they're important to have a good day, but they're really important when you're not having a good day. That's what I'm trying to say. Mm-hmm. I don't know what your experience yeah. is, but. Uh, uh, true. And I, and I totally get what you're saying when you go through them and you don't really feel them because that's what I've been kind of doing mm-hmm. like the last week or so. I've just been like, okay, I'm so grateful for, you know, this house and my car and my relationships with my family and my friends. And I'm, I'm so, you know, grateful for the opportunities that are going to come today and all the great stuff I'm going to sell in my store today, you know, and then, and then I just, and this morning I was just like, you know, that's where the like work comes in. And it, you know, I think part of it's just because we're busy because I usually do it when I'm getting ready for my day. Mm. So just in the midst of, you know, my shower and my, curling my hair and putting my makeup on. I try to take that time to also be doing that. So it's just like, okay, I just need to get ready and get out the door instead of just going, no, this only literally takes like two extra minutes to just stop and feel it because it really, you really have to feel it. If you just, you can just go through the motions and it will help. But when you feel it, it's like a fast track Mm -hmm. and it, it really helps so much. Yeah. The other thing that I noticed today and I specifically was talking about it with Louie after he and I had finished the podcast this morning, was that so often, and it's because of what we talk about. I mean, we we on this show, we, we, we talk about it being our daily dose of happy, and it is because we try to keep it as positive as we can. And yet we're inevitably talking about stuff uh, that isn't going right and how do we deal with it or, or understanding the difference between, uh, you know, what you focus on and and stuff just happening to you. And, and in order to, to understand that, you have to tell stories about things that don't go right and so forth. So I was noticing that mm-hmm. even with our positive angle, which is pretty positive, we still spend a large chunk of the show talking about negative stuff. And Louis pointed out to me, mm-hmm. well, you know, as long as we're not focusing on it for more than 17 seconds or whatever, we're okay. We're not manifesting anything. But even so, it, it, it does create kind of a... Uh, kind of a, a, a pool of energy or a pool of experience, so to speak. And I was, I was really mm-hmm. aware of that. So I don't know exactly how to accomplish what it is I want to accomplish, but starting with this show, I'm, I'm going to be making a conscious effort to see how often I can state something in the positive. Even if we're talking about a difficult topic, I'm going to see how often can I find a way to state it in the positive. Because mm-hmm. among other things, we live with a language, the English language, that is dominated by negative terms. There are far more negative words than there are positive words in the English language. I don't know if you ever noticed that. That, that bothered me very much. I, I, I haven't. I oh, haven't noticed that. Well, look at the Abraham Hicks scale, for instance, the emotional guidance scale. Like two-thirds mm-hmm. of the scale are negative terms. Only about one-third is positive. That, that gives you an idea of what kind of, uh, of um, ratio we're talking about. And even with uh, things like idioms, I mean, English idioms, you know, words that aren't, you know, they aren't strictly according to Hoyle, but they've, they've turned into words over time and they, they kind of, you know, mean something different from what they seem to mean, that, you know, that sort of thing. English idioms are, are loaded with negativity. It's incredible how many of them are negative based. So it's, <laughs> the more I look at it, the more I realize just how big of a challenge it is. It's a big, big challenge. Can we find ways no matter what we're talking about, to find the positive side. And <clears throat> I, I don't mean mm-hmm. that, you know, like laughing in the face of, of horrible things happening. That's not what I mean. Just finding where the positive is because it's inevitably there. Well, well, even in the horrible things, like, you know, just for instance, I was talking about um, the, you know, the government shut down and they've started back up. But, you know, there's a lot of people that, that, didn't get those paychecks that live page paycheck to paycheck and Mm. were really struggling. Right. You know, and so, you know, that's all over the news, all these people and all their hardships and everything. But what I really heard was like, just on Facebook alone, I saw many um, businesses, restaurants, especially in my community that were offering up meals. If you bring in your state, you know, your state ID badge or whatever mm-hmm. from your work, right. we'll give you a free burger and fries, you know, yeah. or we'll give you a free 
box of food or we'll give you a free ga- a couple gallons of gas or whatever. And I just thought, you know, what you're talking about where you flip it, like you can take horrible situations like 9-11, mm-hmm. you know, and immediately there were stories about the heroes. Oh, yeah. There was, there was stories about the helpers and the and the people that, you know, even even inside the building, you heard about those mm-hmm. people, you know, even that that passed away, but were helping people get through yep. the stairwells before, you know, before it went down. And it's like, to me, when when something like that happens, something tragic and and things happen tragic in our lives every day that we perceive as, you know, this huge tragedy when, you know, you really when you really see the light of it, it really is no big deal. But but. There's always a lesson. There's always opportunity for to do things in a better way in all of those situations. Like I was just watching. There's this woman. Um, she does juggling the Jenkins. It's it's her blog, and she's on Facebook, and I think she's on Instagram and stuff. And she's an ex addict, and mm. so she basically took her first drink when she was like 19, and she just never stopped. She just wow. she was very prone to addiction Mm -hmm. and she's got um two or three kids now and she does this blog about being sober and stuff so she was just talking about how she was in traffic they were going on a little family vacation and she was like um all upset because they were at a standstill on the freeway and -hmm. it was like eight o'clock at night and they were just she was just like oh man you know like everybody's just flipping out because they got you know they're on their way somewhere and and she found out um, a couple hours later, you know, because they got stuck in traffic like that for like an hour and a half, like at a standstill. And, of course, that's just tragic for everyone involved, you know, and everybody's flipping out like first world problems. You of course, know? yeah, right. <laughs> we all got a car. We all got snacks, you know, but we're <laughs> flipping out. And and she found out that it was a church van and that like four kids had lost their lives that night in oh, a wow. in a rollover and she and so she just like you know stopped did this little video and she said i just want people to to recognize that like yes. we were so lucky we still had our kids there were families that were affected that their lives will never ever be the same and i was so inconvenienced by right. being in traffic for an extra hour and a half and yeah. And so she was, you know, like just to to know that, just to go, wait a minute, I need to appreciate what I have. I mean, even if you can't make light of that situation because there was nothing you could personally do Mm because you were 10 miles back or whatever. But just to go, wait a minute, you know, I need to step back and just appreciate what I have. So Mm -hmm. I I just love those stories, you know, because it's true. It's so it's true. Very true. I'm, and we we normally try to stay away from topics like 9-11 just because we don't want to get really depressed. But since you mentioned it, one right. of the, one of the right. great positive stories out of 9-11 is that the Twin Towers normally held 15,000 office workers every day. And less than 3,000 mm-hmm. actually got killed that day. And most of them weren't yeah. even in the building that day, even though it was a work day, a regular work day. The only mm-hmm. way that I know of to explain that is spirit or God or the law of attraction or however you want it to, to label it did what was mm-hmm. necessary to keep those people away as many people away as possible. And, and cause yeah. otherwise I mean, they, there should have been a whole lot more killed, but actually 12,000 people got saved that day that, that gets skipped over yeah. a lot. And I think that's really, really yeah. noteworthy. Yeah. Um, Jeffrey has our first just, question, by the way, um, and oh, it's right in line with what oh, we're good. talking about too, which is really cool. And this is a Q and a folks. So if you're listening to the live stream and you want to, plug a question into the comments section, by all means do that. And we'll be glad to bring it up and talk about it and share ideas. And we'll, we'll share your comments as well as we can. Um, but Jeffrey's asking, can we discuss the labeling of things as positive or negative? Who decides which is which? Which is a great question. Really good question. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I, do you want to take a stab at it first or, or do you want me to go first? Um, I just was going to say, I think it's all about perception and where you personally are at. Yes. You know, I, I just think that happiness is a choice and you can even, if, you know, you don't, you said you didn't want to talk about it much, but even as something <laughs> as tragic as 9-11 and as, as 
petty as being stuck in traffic or, you know, you're yep. out of toothpaste or something yeah. like, like, um, you know, I mean, some people that would ruin like that, you know, like on the secret where she stubs her toe and then, you know, the whole day just goes to crap. And it's, and it's, it just, I just think that it, it's your perception of it. And when you get into really using the law of attraction to your advantage, when things like that happen, instead of going to that place like, ah, you know, I can't brush my teeth, I can't, I'm not going to be able to, you know, like, you know, people can turn that into a mountain, you know, and and instead just going, okay, well, I got some Tic Tacs downstairs and I, can, I got some mouthwash, so let's get on with it. Like, mm-hmm. and, and I'll put that on my list, you know. I mean, I just, I just think that, from something as petty as that, you know, to a national tragedy, it depends on where your focus is. And if your focus is on the lesson and the opportunity that's involved, then, you know, I I have a little example. My um, brother, so my, my mom's dad, she was raised by her stepdad for the most part, but her dad was very involved in her life. And she, so he was our grandpa Bob and he would come and visit like every Christmas. Okay. And um, so my brother went into the military right out of high school. We like graduated at like one o'clock and by six o'clock he was on a bus to basic training. Like he was, he had had it all planned out and he was going to be an airborne ranger and he had qualified for everything. He was so excited. He was going to go through basic and then go through ranger training and, and, about two weeks before his pre-ranger training, he got his first of two groin hernias, Ooh. which automatically just bumped him out of that. Mm, that. Yeah. And because he was already airborne, he was he turned into airborne infantry, which is like about as low as you can go as far as being in a war. Right. And. You know, so we were, of course, freaking out. He was very upset because he was he was all about challenging himself. So he ended instead of going off to ranger training, he went in and had his hernias um, repaired and then came home to convalesce and get better. So he was home that Christmas. And that was our last Christmas with my grandpa because he mm. passed away the, the next May. Yeah. And he got to have, because he was an adult at that point, he had to have the, he got to have the experience of, of watching a football game with my grandpa as an adult and listening to my grandpa cuss and just be another guy <laughs> instead of being grandpa. And that, I mean, it was just like, it was just like this really important moment where he was sure. like, that was really cool to experience my grandpa like that instead of as like a kid, you know? Right. And so I always said that that was one of the big reasons that that all fell into place, but it was tragic, you mm-hmm. know, it was, it was really hard and it all ended up being great. And, you know, my, my brother never did go to war or anything. Um, but, but, uh, yeah, it's just like interesting how those things happen. And I just remember, even then, before I really had a grasp on the on the law of attraction and how it all worked, it was just like, oh, it made total sense. Like that happened, so he could have this experience, this neat experience with Grandpa that he would never have the chance to do again, and he probably wouldn't have ever seen my Grandpa again, right? Just because he wouldn't have been home for that. So, yeah. yeah. So it would like you know that's just an example of you know in the moment it was it was rough and we were all upset but then it turned into something really great and sometimes right. you have to wait for that yes, you know that's true that's very true yeah i i love uh what Cindy Chavez who of course co-hosts with me on Tuesday mornings and for both of the podcasts on Wednesday i love what she has to say on this subject because she likes to point out that positive and negative for the most part, or at least to a large extent, are about moral judgments. They're about, I, I like, I, I, I'm in favor of that or I'm against that. I, I think that's a good thing for people to experience, but I think that's a bad thing for people to experience, positive, negative. When in fact, what's really going on is I prefer this, I don't prefer that. So mm-hmm. she and I have kind of adopted the behavior of saying, I mean, I, I still refer to it as positive, negative. I kind of slip a little bit, but when I when I'm mindful about it, I try to remember it's actually preferred and not preferred. 
this is what I prefer, this is right. what I don't prefer. And and that fits in with what you were talking about um, regarding the idea that this is perception. My perception mm-hmm. may be different from your perception, which may be different from his perception or from her perception. Our perceptions can all be different because we have different goals in life, different things we want to have happen, different mm-hmm. experiences we want to have. So my positive might be your negative or vice versa. Maybe your positive is my negative. That's why uh, preferred and not preferred, I think, is the better way to go. And when we express it that way, well, then the question that Jeffrey asks is, can we discuss the labeling of things as preferred or not preferred? Who decides which is which? Pretty clear. The person who prefers it becomes very straightforward right. at that point. Right. So that's the way I think yeah. about Jeffrey. Because you can... Because you can also see people that, you know, like there's people like us that are really trying to put a positive spin on everything. And we're, in my opinion, a lot happier people Mm -hmm. because of that. But there are also people that could get something, have something amazing happen to them or get something amazing in their life. And, you know, well, it's not going to be that way for long. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So (laughs) that's their, that's their, that's their preference because they don't know any better. And that, to me, that's the people that I like to like, number one, be a shining example for. So they're like, wait a minute, why, how is this happening for you? Like, why are you so happy all the time? Like, I've had people say that to me, like on Facebook, you know, like, Shelly, it's not all happy all the time. You can't just <laughs> constantly throw happiness at it. And I'm like, yeah, I know I have bad days and things happen to me that aren't great. But but why would you want to focus on that? Like, you know, that doesn't make sense to me now. I mean, I it used to, and I think that's just because you kind of want to join the crowd, you know, like, oh, yeah, that's horrible, or oh, yeah, that was great, but it's not going to last, and then something else is going to happen, and it'll get ruined, or it'll get taken away, or it was just that one day, you know what I mean? So <laughs> just like, I guess it's, I guess part of it is trying to follow the crowd because there's so much drama and negativity. And and then when you watch the news, it's just confirmed, mm-hmm. you know. Oh, yeah. It's everywhere. The negativity so, just kind of predominates not just in our culture, but in cultures all around the world. It's very, very big. It's very strong. Um, mm-hmm. For those people who say that, uh, oh, well, you, you can't be happy all the time um, or even make the argument that you would, would not want to be happy all the time. I respectfully disagree. I understand what they're mm-hmm. coming from. They're basically saying, well, you, you do your best growing when uh, adversity happens. This is true. That's when the best expansion mm-hmm. happens. That's when you learn the most. Absolutely true. But I've also noted that people who deal with adversity in the best way that they can, who try to find silver linings, which is what I was trying to do yesterday, try to find silver linings throughout whatever bad thing is going on. First of all, Mm -hmm. uh, we're we're calling it a bad thing. In light of my policy I described earlier, I'm not going to call it a bad thing. I'm going to call it a not preferred thing. And there were a lot of Mm -hmm. not preferred things that were going on yesterday, things that I definitely did not prefer to have happen. But I didn't, like you said, I didn't have to focus on those. I didn't have to say, well, that's my day. That's just the way it goes. I, I mean, I could have said that. Lots of people would say that. As you say, they mm-hmm. people get very much into the drama of it. But the other way to, to look at the same situation is it is possible to go through a situation like that and not get down about it. I actually started to get down about it, and that's what was really concerning me. So I was really working hard to climb back up. But I can I can conceive and foresee the idea of having a day like that happen and I've gotten so good at finding the positive side of it that I, I, I live and experience the day. It happens, but my mood doesn't fall down very far. It stays up in the positive zone. Maybe I like dip my toe into negative and then I bounce back up again. You know, so have I ignored the contrast? No, I just chose not to wallow in it. I chose not mm-hmm. to swim in it all day long. I chose to say, you know what? <laughs> Okay, so that stuff's happening. It doesn't have to affect my mood. It's not right. like the events control my emotions. Because that's what's behind that, isn't it? It's it the, the idea behind that idea that, oh, well, it's going to all fall apart, is that those events control our emotions. Right. And you and I know that's a lie. It's yeah. a, it's and, a very common And I lie, think but... that that's what, what I would say as far as what you're talking about where um, – you know, because what you said about how, well, people say, well, you know, 
problems and and issues that come up in your life and non preferred things come up in your life are are there to teach us and to help us grow, which I totally agree with. But when you get to a point with using the law of attraction to your benefit, um, you get to a point where you where it doesn't hold you down very far. You know, like right. you you know you go exactly. out to start your car and it doesn't start, and you're like, okay, what's the lesson here? You know, what why why is my car not starting? What do I, you know what what do I need to learn here? And I actually, I've gotten to the point now where if something like that happens. My first question isn't, what's the lesson I need to learn? My first question is, okay, why is my vibration so low? <laughs> what do I have to do to turn this vibration around? That's actually my first question. Before I even want to know what the lesson is, I want to know what it's going to take to turn my feeling around. Yeah, I'm not, I think, and that's another thing. Like, for me, it is all about the lesson, and, you're, and you focus on your vibration. Because I might have skipped out to the car and been all happy and ready to go, and my vibration was fine, you know, but... But number one, what's the lesson? Like, what did I do to attract that? And then what did, and then what is the solution? Like, I, I immediately, I love being like solution based, you know, mm-hmm. like people freak out about all these issues and political issues and life issues. And it's like, you're not get, you're just spinning your, it's like being on a, on a, a stationary bike. You're just pedaling and nothing's, you're not going anywhere. Or nothing's mm-hmm. happening. You're putting out all this energy. For nothing. Like, what can you do to solve it? What can you do to be a part of the solution instead of just complaining and rolling around in it? You know, it's, you know, mm-hmm. so like the whole, you know, car scenario, it's like go out to the car, it doesn't start. Even if my knee jerk reaction is being upset and frustrated and irritated and, and throwing my arms up and I don't know what I'm going to do, that doesn't last very long. Where, right years ago that would have been my week mm-hmm. like that sure. would have been just my morning that yep. or my or a couple 20 minutes that would have been my week you know how are we going to do this we can't afford it i you know how my I, i'm going to have to take you to work so i can have the car i'm going <laughs> to the kids are going to have to ride the bus you know what whatever it is like right. you know it's just like the whole tragedy instead of it just like Oh, this is totally going to fix itself. And within a couple hours, boom, the car is running again, or there's an extra car, or you, you just, you just figure it out. It's just, you know, that's where the law of attraction comes in, where you just go, it's going to end up better than I expect it to. Mm-hmm. And when you put that out there and have faith that it will, it does, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, it really but you does. have to feel it and you have to really believe it because people say, Oh, well, I put that out there all the time, but do you really believe it? You really believe that it's going to end up better mm-hmm. than you expected it to end up. Today I was Well, driving. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, right. That's usually yeah. the answer. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I was driving uh, to another town to uh, uh, run a, an errand and, and get some gas for the car and so forth. And as I'm driving along, um, I start running into red lights. And, and I like playing with red lights because they're a fun way to kind of do a quick test with law of attraction. You know, so I'm running to the red lights, and, and instantly my reaction is to check what my vibration was, to check how I'm feeling. And instantly I knew I, I wasn't feeling all that great. I wasn't feeling bad. You know, if I was that 22-point mm-hmm. scale, I was like, you know, maybe 10, something like that. I wasn't in a bad place, but I wasn't in a good place either. And I, I recognized that, okay, well, I'm getting results that are based on where I'm feeling. Let's see if I can adjust that. Let's see if I can go for all green lights, you know. And so I, I, I would do various little processes as I'm driving along to try to, to in, improve the score, so to speak. And within seconds, yeah. I would get not all green lights. I'd get more green lights. Okay, so I'm saying, well, right. still not quite there yet. Got to gotta work on this some more. And so I'd work on it some more. And I actually, during this trip, managed to get my, my mood to increase substantially on the scale, scale to the point where I was getting green light after green light after green light. I mean, you can't get better testing yeah. than that. Instantaneous response, yeah. you know, to tell you exactly how yeah. you're feeling and remind you to do a little check. Now, how do you feel right now, Walt? Oh, well, I guess I didn't feel all that good. Yeah, it's actually worse than I thought it was. I just hadn't really been paying attention, but I really wasn't feeling all that good. Or, oh, wow, I guess I'm feeling better than I thought I was feeling, you know, but checking in, just finding out. that That's really an important thing, just knowing that. Um, in fact, uh, Fabian made a really nice, really interesting comment. He says... Two comments, actually. He says, uh, uh, regarding the idea of uh, 
positivity and negativity and how you deal with it. He says, people tell me the same thing, but you have to make positivity a habit. And he says, it doesn't mean positive people don't deal with adversity. We just work smarter through it, not harder. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly. really good. Exactly. That's really good. Exactly. Yeah. That's, that, that's perfectly said. Yep. We just work smarter instead of harder. Yep. Yep. So here and we whatever have. That process, whatever that process is for you is whatever works for you. Cause I noticed that Jeffrey's next question is, do the tools that you use to raise your vibration always work? Do we consistently need new tools for new circumstances? Right. And I feel like. That's kind of up to you. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know? like, yeah. like the the tools that I work are just habit now. Like I don't, I can't even really pinpoint them. I don't think, but I just know that when I'm in a spot that I need to, you know, look for a different spot to be in and look for those solutions and those opportunities. But I don't feel like I have a set like, you know, okay, where's my notes? I got to make sure I'm doing this, you know, in the correct sequence so it happens right you know i think you just get to a point that you know what works for you and you, what's going to work for you isn't going to work for everybody else so you just find your magic button that that you can push and change your your you know how to do it smarter instead of harder mm -hmm. your solution or your approach yeah yeah i think, I think that's true and, and actually amanda also followed up i want to i want to uh uh give my response to Jeffrey's question before going after Amanda's question, because uh, Amanda's is really good. Uh, but uh, Jeffrey, uh, you were asking about the, the, the tools that you use to raise your vibration. Do they always work? It doesn't matter. I mean, I, on my day on Sunday where I was having a tough time, all of my tools weren't working. I mean, the very first thing that I do every morning is my mirror exercise. My mirror exercise usually gives me a nice boost for the day, flat. Nothing yesterday. I was done with it. I, w I, I thought I was lying to myself. That, that's how bad it went. It just did not go well at all. Well, so what? I've got 16 other tools on my list. You know, so if the first one didn't work, go to the next one. And that's what I did. I was going through, I mean, literally, I had to go through uh, one, two, three, four, five, six of the tools that day, just trying to find a combination that would actually get me to where I needed to be. And, and the first five didn't work, but the sixth one did. The sixth one was actually mm -hmm. my first one. It was probably one of the first ones I should have done. That's the one that I have the most success with. That's where I go take a walk and listen to positive music at the same time. That combination actually gave me the pickup I was looking for. But uh, mm -hmm. you know, the other tools weren't working. They just weren't working. And, you know, so what? Okay, that one didn't work. I'll go on to the next one. It's like, you know, there's always a bus every three minutes. <laughs> I find that interesting that you – that that it's take a walk because that's my, that's kind of like my, not necessarily taking a walk, but when someone's really frustrated with something and it's not working and they're pushing and pushing and pushing, that's what I always tell them is just walk away from it. Like, yeah, sometimes you, you just know? have to get away. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just get it, get it out of your head. And you know, I, I had that earlier with trying to bring up some travel stuff for somebody and I, and it was just like, it was just frustrating me and nothing was working. And I was just like, okay, time to get up and go do something else for a little mm -hmm. while. Like there's, and that's part of my, my, um, what a solution or whatever to get out of negativity is I, I have the, the freedom, which I'm so grateful for. I have the time freedom where I can just get up and walk away and go do a load of laundry or go, you know, watch TV for a few minutes or, you know, I don't have to be, doing what I'm doing right this minute. So that's, mm -hmm. that's, that's nice. But. That is good. That is good. Um, now Amanda has a really good question and it's a question that actually can be answered on a couple different levels. Um, it can be answered mm -hmm. just, you know, on the surface, what the question actually asks, but we, but the tendency is also to answer it in terms of, well, how do we solve the problem? And that, that actually isn't what she asked, but let me, let me read the question. She says, what happens when you believe and feel it, but your spouse is negative about the situation? And what she's asking is what actually happens? So I'm going to answer that question first, and then we can talk about how do you fix it? But what's actually happening is, well, if you believe it and you're feeling it and your spouse isn't feeling it, you're on different vibrational levels. So you're actually not connecting. There, there's not a vibrational connection going on there. So as long as you stay on that positive love, level and your spouse stays on that negative level, nothing happens between the two of you. You're just not connecting. 
Mm-hmm. Now, the, the, the underlying question that I think most people think of when they see that is, well, how do you fix that situation? And that's a different question. Um, mm-hmm. I, I perceive it as something where I don't want to fix the situation. I, I said it that way kind of on purpose to, to give myself a way of saying no. <laughs> but mm-hmm. um, like when Louise, my wife, is is just not feeling good. And I've, I've come out of doing a podcast and I'm like psyched. I'm stoked. I'm feeling great. All this energy is flowing. And I go out to see her and I can see she's like in the dumps. Well, if she asks, I'll tell her about how the podcast went. And she often does ask. But if she doesn't ask, I just simply try to be there for her while in my positive place. What I try to mm-hmm. avoid doing is lowering myself to her place and say, oh, I feel so bad for you. That's the one thing I try to avoid more than anything else, because now I'm down at that same vibrational level. I can't help her at that level. I have no energy to give her when I'm in that low level. So I try to stay in that high level and then see if I can feed her that energy so she can kind of reach for it and have something to help pull herself up, so to speak. Um, So, I mean, that's that's the approach that I use with her. But it's going to be different with every spousal combination. Now, every couple is going to have their own different dynamic, their own ways of dealing with stuff. And you have to kind of know you and your spouse and your relationship, how you're going to handle that need. I mean, the overall pattern is you try to keep yourself in a high vibrational place, but the specifics of that are going to be different from one couple to the next. Yeah. I mean, what and do you in do? that, in that situation, I think that you can only be responsible for yourself. And I, my mom, my mom has a quote that she used to have on her refrigerator. She like, um, did it, you know, in the little letters, you know, like the kids, the little colored letters that you have right. like when your kids are little and you have them on the fridge. Yeah. And it said, you can, you can, and I don't remember who the, who the quote was by, but it was, you can either be a shining example or a terrible warning. <laughs> and so, yes. and so I always, and so I always say to people that are, you know, like to me, maybe one of Amanda's questions is like, if she believes in the law of attraction and making it work for the best, you know, for her, to her advantage and her spouse is like, I don't believe in that crap, you know, um, just do your thing and be a shining example. And when things start falling into place for you and he's going, how does that work? How did you make that happen? I mean, to me, that's the biggest thing here. Like when you, when I first watched the secret, I wanted to shout it from the mountaintops, you know, like I just, wanted to share it with everybody and not everybody is there and that's okay. That's where the allowing comes in where you just have to allow everybody to be on their own path with this Hmm. because I think that I know so much more than I did just a couple years ago about it. And I was preaching it then like I knew everything, you know what I mean? So it's just like, you're just going to keep being at better and higher levels with yourself and on your journey with this and you can try to drag a few people along with you and your spouse is an important person to try to drag with you because you want them to be just as happy and excited about it as you are. But it doesn't always happen that way. I mean, I was pretty lucky. I think you're probably pretty lucky with with your wife. I think she's pretty on board with all of this. And I was, too, with my husband. He's, you know, there was parts of him that was like, yeah, I don't know about that. But, you know, and then and then we started practicing it and things just started falling together it was like whoa this is amazing you know Mm -hmm. and and, um i just think that you just have to be a shining example is is you know and that and that can be hard when you're in a a you know a relationship like a husband wife boyfriend girlfriend relationship because that person is right there all the time and can be trying to bring you down because that's where and they're not doing it because they don't want you to be happy. They're doing no. it because they think that it's a bunch of gibberish. You right. know? <laughs> they don't get it. Or they may not even be thinking at all, just that this is the way I feel and, and I want you to feel the way I feel. Yeah. It could be just as simple as that. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that's why I said it really does depend on, on the couple and, and what their relationship is right. like. That, that, that really dictates how you go about doing it. In general, you try, like you said, you try to keep yourself as that, that uh, the shining star, that, that example. Um, and, and mm-hmm. you know, truth to be told, we don't always succeed in, in doing that. We, it's very easy to get sucked down into if the other person is feeling down. It's very easy to get sucked down. Um, Sunday was kind of a reverse. Louise was actually in a better place than I was. I was having that really 
really bad day and, and she wasn't having a bad day. And I, I mentioned to her I was struggling with it and so forth. And, and she very honestly said to me, I really don't know how to help you. And that was actually an excellent mm-hmm. answer because there's really no way for me, for her to help me other than to just stay in her high vibrational place. That was really the only solution. But she felt mm-hmm. she felt a little helpless because she couldn't really do anything. But she had to be very honest and say that that's where it is right now. By the way, you get that kind of honesty when you're married to a psychotherapist. Louise, I don't know if you knew that. <laughs> Louise was a therapist for over ten years and, and uh, very um, very realistic, very very hard view, uh, a realistic view of the world because she's had to deal with so much of the uh, let's call it the the seamier side of life. Um, mm-hmm. And it, it gives you a certain perspective. But on the other hand, like you say, she's really bought into the whole uh, concept and likes the idea of the law of attraction. And it, her uh, background both serves her in terms of you know having a very grounded way of dealing with it. On the other hand, it, it can also kind of hold it back sometimes because she can get kind of hung up in, on what her psychotherapeutic teaching taught her. But uh, it, right. it, it, it's a benefit depending on how you look at it. If you, if you look at it the right way, it's a benefit. And that's what she usually does, and it pays off very well. The thing that she and I used to talk about was th- there's a concept, and I think you and I mentioned this, we t- kind of talked about this last week. Th- there's a concept out there that says that in a marriage, in a, in a successful marriage, both parties to the marriage have to be willing to compromise. They have to be willing to you know, give in or you know, let the other person win or, you know, that kind of stuff. And Louise and I have always laughed at that <laughs> we, because we never had that experience. That's not the way it has worked for us. We realized what it was, too. Uh, in one sense, we were kind of unfortunate, depending on how you want to look at it. We were unfortunate in that we didn't meet until we were in our 40s. On the other hand, we were fortunate yeah. Because we didn't meet until we were in our 40s. <laughs> and I say that because right. that gave us those earlier years to get ourselves lined up, to get ourselves in order, to straighten, you know, she was very much of a codependent person. She had to straighten all that stuff out. You know, I, I was very much of an right. angry, lonely person who, who was a wallflower. I had to learn how to come out. You know, we both had to, to straighten out our stuff before we, we could really be available for a happy relationship. We did that. We met. And it just flowed. There was, I mean, do we have to compromise? It really, it's very rare for us to actually have to compromise. Occasionally, very, very rarely, but most of the time it comes down to one of us wanting to do X more than the other person wants to do Y. And so the person who wants to do Y says, I don't really care about that much. Let's go do X. That's fine. No big deal. You know, or, you know, planning, uh, how do you want the the, the next uh vacation to work out or what do you want to do with you know, the business or whatever it, it we, we rarely yeah. disagree that's what's so amazing about it it's either, you know one person has the stronger feeling the stronger sense of it the stronger idea and the other one says yeah that sounds good let's go with that <laughs> compromise yeah, is almost awesome. never a part of it <laughs> that's really awesome because i look at at my marriage because i've been married well we've been together for 25 years married for 23 and you know the first 15 of that 15 18 years of that was was a rough road you know mm-hmm. and there were there were times when we almost were done with each other and mm-hmm. and for all different reasons you know and and you know that that thing well we we stayed together for the kids there was a couple times where we literally did it was just like okay mm-hmm. well we really need to work this out because you know, the kids deserve to have us both and neither one of us, you know, I don't know. It wasn't like we were, we hated each other. It just wasn't working and we were just done with each other, you know, for different reasons or whatever. And we ended up sticking it out. And, you know, now I'm so glad, but what you say about being in your forties, like, I feel like I didn't even start gaining wisdom in my life until I, like the rest of it was just all experience, and then you hit forty, and it's like wisdom shows up, and you're like, <laughs> "Oh, okay." <laughs> I mean, I was excited to turn. Like all my friends around me were just like, "Oh, I'm gonna be forty. It's horrible. I'm so old." And I'm just uh, and even now when I see posts on Facebook, "Oh, I'm so old. I remember rotary phones," and I'm like, "I'm not old. Speak for yourself." You know, my <laughs> grandma who was in the 80s was old. I'm in my 40s. That's not old. That's 
like life is just getting going. Like this is a blast. Like, mm-hmm. you know, like I, I just love, I envy that. That would be so great to just meet up in your forties and, and just be able to connect so well, you know, like I look, you know, we have an amazing history together and I appreciate that so much. And sure. we know so much about each other and stuff, but, but yeah, it was, it was a struggle. And when you're talking about compromise, you know, it was like, it was we both compromised and then resented because of our compromises, you know, mm-hmm. for different reasons. And, and, you know, we've gotten past all of that beautifully, which is awesome. But, yeah, what a what a blessing for you to. <laughs> what I, I suspect, too, that you and Scott, as you were as you were uh, starting young and then developing, you were probably having to go through your personal development lessons while you were married. And that's why you were running into all these I, things, you know? And, and once you yeah. start, once you actually got through the, the most important ones, the ones that helped you achieve your individual balances, then everything straightened out and you were able to focus on the positives. You were able to focus on the things that were good because you had gotten yourself yeah. into alignment. Pretty cool. Actually, you, you can do that. I look, at, I look at our wedding pictures and I'm like, wow, we just had no clue. Like, why are we even, we had no business getting married when we were <laughs> at that time. But we did. And and then I look at, like, you know, my kids and their friends, and they're starting to, you know, Madison's 21, so she's got friends that are starting to have babies and getting married and stuff. And it's just like, what are you doing? Like, you were just in high school two weeks ago. <laughs> like, what are you doing starting a family? Are you crazy? You know, but... but you know, it's just, it's so interesting, the different perspective when you're in the middle of it and you're in your twenties and you think you got it all figured out and you, you know, and then, and then when you're, when your kids are in that space and you're just like, wow, you guys don't have a clue what you're doing. You know, like my, my daughter, her, her and her boyfriend, you know, they're going through issues that you go through when you first move in together and first, you know, and, you know, I'm trying to solve it all. And I'm just like, I got to stop. She's got to go through all of this. Absolutely. Stuff. Yeah. Figure it all out. And she's going to be crying part of the time. And she's going to be laughing part of the time. And, you know. And by the way, that's love. love. What you just, what you just described that what you, what you're willing to do for her, that's real love. That's, that's the yeah. true kind. Because you have so much respect for her that you're willing to let her go through what she needs to go through in order to learn well, what she needs I to learn. Try, well, I try really hard. I'm a microman. Kids are always like, "Mom, back off." Oh, okay. <laughs> well, but but it is, but, but it has been a huge lesson for me just to go. You know, both my husband and I, because she'll, you know, she'll have a bad day and she'll call us. You know, we'll put her on speakerphone. She's just like, "Oh, this happened and that happened at work," and you know, because she's a coach and a, and she's a teacher's aide, and she's just like, and the the girls couldn't even hit the ball over the net and blah, you know, and she just like complained and we're trying to fix everything. And then we're just like, we just need, she just is calling to vent. She doesn't want us to fix it. She just knows that we'll listen to her. You know, she doesn't, exactly. you know, so I don't know. It's, it's a huge lesson as a parent to just back off because you've been fixing things their whole lives, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, we've got, we've got some more questions off. here to address. So let's see, okay, what do we have sorry. here? Um, well, actually, we had uh, they, they've been talking to each other, actually. Jeffrey and Amanda actually have been exchanging quite a bit. Um, let's see. I know I saw at least one question here. Well, Jeffrey said, uh, referring to those those difficult times, those are the times you have to be wary of and ask yourself if you want to be right or do you want to be happy? That's a really good question. I mean, it's not really so much a question for us to answer. It's a question for us to take notice of. Because mm-hmm. you do have, we have that option at all times. Do we want to be right or do we want to be happy? Um, those of us who choose to try to be right are setting ourselves up <laughs> to be miserable because we're, we're basically saying, I can't be happy unless you agree with me. And that's a lose lose mm-hmm. situation that you can't win with that. I have a lot of experience with that one. I know that one real well. <laughs> <laughs> that was yeah, I think I, I do too. I, I've definitely <laughs> learned to learn. I love that. Yeah, it's good to let go of. It's really good. Um, And then, let's see. Amanda said, well, let's see. Jeffrey said, uh, I would also ask him if he truly wants the same thing. If not, and you do, that's a conversation to be had. If he does, but just convincing, you may have to drag him with you, but you can use that opportunity to reaffirm your beliefs. I I might try to avoid the dragging him, but 
Um, Amanda says, just happy. That's all. That was my fault. <laughs> she says, I am, but it's frustrating when I try to explain the positive and everything. He's shifting a little just based on my vibration. I can see it. It's like trying to keep him on track with the positivity. LOL. I was just wondering about the opposite vibe canceling each other out. And that that's a really good point. People wonder about that. I mean, what happens when you have two different vibrations going on at the same time? Um, they don't actually cancel each other out. They just don't connect. They, they, they aren't. They, mm-hmm. it's, it's like if, if you think of... Um, of vibrating objects as like floating in midair and you have two of them that are vibrating at different speeds and they start to come close to each other. They, they kind of like bounce away from each other because the vibrations don't work. Mm-hmm. Whereas the ones that, that try to come together and they have similar vibrations, they kind of snap together. That's the law of attraction at work. So when, yeah. you, when, when your vibration is different from your spouse's vibration, it, there's a lack of communication going on. There's a lack of experience going on. You're, you're, you're not experiencing life in the same way. You're not in the same space. You're not in the same time. You're not in the same vibration. You're not in the same energy. None of it is the same. I mean, if, if somebody were to walk into your house, they'd say, well, you're both in the same place at the same time. But that's about it. I mean, in terms of the experience, yeah. the experience is completely different. So they don't really cancel each other out. They just They just don't affect each other. Um, the reason I told the story about how, like, if Louise is feeling bad and I've just come off the podcast and I'm feeling good, um, I always think about that situation as I need to keep myself in a high place, I, uh, as good a feeling place as I can, because I know that if she is trying to climb her way out, my v- high vibration is going to help her do that. If she's not trying mm-hmm. to climb her way out, nothing I'm going to do is going to help. I mean, what are, right. what, what are my options? If my options are to feel good while she's feeling bad, in which case there's no connection going on, so it doesn't help, or to fall down to her level if she's not going to rise up. And if I'm falling to her level, that means we're both at a low vibration. And at that low vibration, mm-hmm. both of us are attracting the wrong stuff. Both of us are miserable. Both of us are unhappy. Both of us are are, are you know manifesting stuff we don't want to have. Well, what's the good of that? <laughs> it doesn't help anybody. So, yeah, like, like you I, say, you gotta stay at that high vibration. That's you, you, you can't fix it for them, but you can, you can set that shining star example so that when they're ready to climb up, it's easier because it really is easier to have somebody up there already feeling good when you're trying to climb up there. It's a lot easier. Right, right, and I, I love the, the, just the, um, concept of sending them love, like yes. just. You know, I don't know. I I always feel like what what really changed for me in my relationship with my husband is when I decided to love him for who he was and not mm-hmm. for who I thought he should be. Right. And and that's a really good way to look at it because right now Amanda wants her her husband. I'm assuming it's her husband or boyfriend. Mm-hmm. Um, um, she wants him to to be in a better place and be happier, and she's you can get frustrated with a person when they're not, you know, which is just totally negates the whole thing when you get frustrated with someone. <laughs> but but when you just are like, you know what, I I married him or I'm with him because of who he is and I love him and I'm here to help if he needs it. And I'm, you know, I think about like you can lead the horse to water, but you can't make him drink, but you could brush him and you can mm-hmm. tell him how great they are. You can walk him around, you know what I mean? Give him some hay yeah. <laughs> or whatever. Well, but yeah, it doesn't, yeah. it doesn't mean you have to be irritated and frustrated and, and force it on him. You can just be like, oh, well, you're not ready to drink the water, you know, but you, but that doesn't mean you're, bad or anything you're just not ready and when you get thirsty enough and want it enough you'll figure it out you know it's funny that you use that metaphor of 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 tending to a horse because in a sense that's louise what louise did with me yesterday i mean i was feeling pretty low i'd been working on trying to get myself up i'd made some progress but i was still feeling it by the time we went to bed at night and she just started treating me like a prince and just appreciating mm-hmm. everything that she appreciates me about me and so forth. And I, I had to just grin because I could tell what she was doing, right? I knew. I, yeah. It was very obvious what she's doing. And so I was just kind of grinning like a half grin, like, yeah, yeah, okay, you're right. Yeah. And, and it was helping. <laughs> it was helping. I mean, it was making it easier for me to just get into that happier place. I, I actually got there fairly quickly with her help last night. So 
I mean, she handled it beautifully. Right. Yeah, just by staying in, in, in that shining star position. It's really cool. Oh, and I guess Amanda likes what we're saying. She says that we nailed it. So there you go. That's good stuff. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we've got about uh, five minutes left. Um, I want to make sure I get a couple of announcements in that uh, I have been remiss in getting in each time, but I am trying to trying to do it. Reminding people to become subscribers if you're not yet subscribers. Uh, the links are in most of the places where we post this. Just click the link that's appropriate for your device. It'll walk you through it, and bang, just like that, you will get all of the episodes that we do coming to your smartphone as we publish them. And then, of course, share the fact that you're listening to the program with other people you know who you think might be um, interested or it might be appropriate to share it with because we want to try to spread the word as much as we can. And we appreciate the efforts of all the fans who do exactly that. We have some great fans out there, Shelly. I don't know if you've been, been uh, able to yeah. notice it enough, but people who are just really doing their best to, to spread the word is really, it, it's, it's heartwarming. It feels so good. So thank you to everybody, everybody who is helping to spread the word because you're the greatest. You're the best fans in the world as far as I'm concerned. So thank you very much. And, uh, <laughs> Oh, I also want to encourage people to, uh, most of our listeners don't listen to the live stream. Most people listen to the recording, which is what a podcast is. And that's great. Um, just because you're listening to the podcast as a recording doesn't mean you can't participate. You know, feel free to send in messages by email or website or, you know, Facebook, Twitter, whatever. And, and we'll, we'll include it in the conversation just like we're doing today. So we want to include your, your thoughts and ideas and questions too. And please feel free to take advantage because we love hearing from, our listeners, or as Cindy likes to say, please keep those cards and letters coming in. <laughs> Dating back to a bygone era that used to say that all the time. So yeah, yeah, that was something that time. Uh, we're in a different time today, but it, it's a good time. There, there are a lot of good things going on today, and uh, you know because we've been around, you and I and others here have been around uh, the planet a little bit longer. Perhaps we we do remember that stuff. But it's also good to remember we're in a good place here. There's a lot of good stuff happening. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, you mentioned uh, all the, the good things that people were doing during the government shutdown. I mean, that's wonderful what's going mm -hmm. on. And a lot of that, I'm sure, happened through social media. A lot of that kind of oh, yeah. communication and oh, connection yeah. was going on that way. So it's cool stuff. Really cool stuff. Uh, let's yeah, see. Just... Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say that I, being a, a worker at a work at home mom, I would be, I would be very much in solitude if I didn't have social media. Yeah, right. <laughs> Facebook, Facebook literally is my social life. And mm -hmm. some people might look at that and go, oh, that's so sad. But it's, it, because I work from home, I have tons of time freedom, which I enjoy. And, and I like making my own hours, but it's nice to have, you know, I can reach out to people in different countries, you know, yeah. and say hi in the middle of the day, which is just, you know, as long as they're not sleeping or whatever. Right, right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fortunately, that kind of thing irons itself out. But you're right, that's cool. It's awesome. We get to have conference. I mean, yeah. Louis, Louis D'Souza, who does the morning show with me. And uh, tomorrow, um, Kelly Pretty and Thursday, Steve Rowell, all three of them live in the U.K. I mean, how cool is that? Yeah. Three, three co-hosts who live in the U.K. It's fabulous. So, yeah, technology yeah. is a wonderful thing. Um. Let's see. Any last uh, thoughts? How about what's the last thought before uh, we finish off for the day? What's what's the the takeaway from today? Um, I would just say um, allow people to be in their place, encourage them, be a shining star, and start your day. Start every day with some good routines to um, continue the positivity throughout your day. Absolutely. Well, that's how we started the show today. So that makes sense. Yeah. Start with those routines and stick with them and do that, uh, that paving process that, that you do throughout your day. Just find something, some way to pave mm -hmm. every single little thing you're going to do next. It really does make a difference. So yeah, thank you. That's awesome. Thank you, Shelly, for uh, doing the show. And thank you for the times you jumped in on the other shows too. You're more than welcome to keep jumping. Oh, in no problem. I haven't done that this week, but I'm going to definitely give it, give it more effort this this coming week. So. Sounds good. Well, we have that to look forward to. So thank you very much. Thank you to our listeners. We'll see you all next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>